and they're kind of I think what's happening right now is these games kind of show the true colors of the fans and that they're ready to like fire Ryan Saunders right now and I mean let's not let's not get it twisted I don't think he's the greatest coach of all time I don't think he's ever going to be a, gr- a great coach and you know what after the season maybe it is time to hire a veteran veteran coach or promote Vanderpool but at this time like we won our first two games with Cat so there's not there's really nothing Ryan can do without his without a top 15 player in the NBA like your team's not good like, it's really hard to make adjustments around not having Cat yeah for me it's just it's tough to see people just completely blameless on Ryan Saunders and not even not even think about yeah the fact that Carl Anthony Towns, Towns is out if this was any other team, if this is the Warriors and their best players out, Steph Curry, no one is questions They're like, oh yeah, Steph Curry's out. That's why they're losing. But with the Timberwolves, no one is giving like that any thought. They're just like, oh, you have D'Angelo Russell, you should be fine. But like, they don't even look at how it affects D'Angelo Russell as a player not having cat because now all the pressure is on D'Angelo Russell, and he need if his shot's not falling, his playmaking isn't there either because they're not going to be they're not contesting his shot as much you know what I mean he needs to have both of his things clicking and they complement each other well yeah so I think that that was our little D'Angelo Russell and uh Ryan Saunders rant so I think next week well we can move into the the Clippers game was just a lot of the same from the Lakers game bad defense they shot very well there was really no one who could stop Paul George it's it's just the way it is um when we don't have any when when a Kogi's out that's tough because yeah. he's he's our go-to defender. And when you don't have someone that can guard Paul George or Kawhi Leonard and Kawhi didn't even play that game, but when you don't have someone who can guard Paul George, he's, he's going to drop over 30 on you very easily. It's just, he's a professional scorer. That's what's going to happen. But Mm. moving into the wizards game, this was one of the worst Timberwolves games I think I've ever watched in my life. This is an Owen five wizards team that's coming into (laughs) our building down one of the best point guards in the league in Russell Westbrook. So all we have to worry about is pretty much Bradley Beal. Yeah. And what happens? Bradley Beal scores 31 on us in three quarters. It's just, I mean, yeah. you can't – he's a great – he's one of the best scorers in the NBA, and much credit to him because I wanted him in the offseason. He's a very good player. But come on, man. If he's scoring 31, there's most definitely – players on our team that can match that and another player who can like I did I don't know who um who is guarding him I I really I think Malik was on him a little bit and I think Jarrett Culver kind of took the reins after that but yeah, just how how is Malik dropping how's Malik saying he's going to be first team all defense and then do that I mean I I'm I'm the Bradley Beal thing is People scores like him, like I think Devin they're gonna get their- does it a lot too. They're gonna they're gonna score, but like they're even if you play perfect defense, yeah. they're gonna do some something crazy and put a bucket in. That's that's fine. I I thought Malik put him into some some bad shots. I I think they should have had Jared on him the whole game just because Jared's mm-hmm. a little bit longer, and a better defender. But- yeah. So yeah, I guess with those volume type scores, I mean, so yeah. So with Bradley Beal, when you're going up against the game plan going in that game, is it all right? Beal's going to get 25. It doesn't matter who we put on him, how we play defense. He's going to get 25. Yes. And that's okay. 25 but points. Let's, but let's make him score only 25. Yeah. And if he gets 30, fine. But that's only 30 points. Because if he's – and if he's the only one that's scoring and he's only getting 25 points, you're going to win that game. You have to make other people beat you. And the problem is we let other people beat us. Yeah, we let – I think the the worst part was we let – we let Thomas Bryant and Denny Avdia pretty much do whatever they wanted in that game. I, d- mm-hmm. I don't think like we're just, we're just the thing that hurts is we were a more talented team than that wizards team. And that win would have been like very good for us as we would yeah. be 500 right now. I think the whole goal without cat is to stay five. Like if we can be 500 without Carl mm-hmm. Anthony towns, I think we can make the playoffs because then once cat comes back, we're going to have a winning record and then we right. can, maybe sneak in but if we're going under 500 without cat our our playoff chances are very grim because the western conference all those teams in it are going to have winning records it's not like the east where you're going to have a losing record for the seventh and ac there's 
every single team in the West that makes the playoffs is going to have a decent winning record. So when you lose to the Wizards, who just absolutely score on you at will, and you can't score back on them, it's, it, I mean, yeah, the scoreboard looked a little closer than it was. It was 130 to 109, but they were almost beating us by 40 at when they were actually had their starters in at the end of the third. Like it's, it's just not acceptable, even without your best player to lose by 40 to the worst team in the NBA. Yeah. For, um, like for me, it was hard even because the, um, if I'm not mistaken, the college football was on the playoff was on that night. Yep. And I was watching that with my family and I was trying to get them to switch back and forth to the Timberwolves game. And it was working for a little bit, but at a certain point, my family's just like, no, we're not watching this crap. Like this is <laughs> like, I'd much rather watch a blowout college football game than watch the Timberwolves just get obliterated by the worst team in the NBA. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. I kept also another thing I kept noticing is like Rui Hachimura. Yeah. He, he's a good player too. I, yeah. I'm fine if Rui beats us. But he kept he's getting like, he kept getting the weirdest mismatches. He would get like, Ricky Rubio on him two times down the court. Like yeah. how how do you possibly allow that mismatch to happen back to back possessions? I agree. I agree. I I saw D'Lo a lot on Thomas Bryant too in the post. Yeah, like what I are think, these matchups? So I think what I got from these few games is the lineup that works best is the one where no one is playing out of position. When you have I'm just saying like D'Lo and Ryan Sauters got together and and kind, I think it was after the Wizards game, actually, and just wanted to simplify the offense. And he, mm-hmm. D'Lo went to John Krasinski of the Athletic and said, like, of course, Jarrett Culver's not going to be able to defend the four position. He's a shooting guard point. He's a shooting guard and a point guard. I mean, like, <laughs> you can't just ask someone who's been doing something their whole life and as a professional at it to go guard a six foot eight, 250 just pound. Just get a damn man. four. Just get a real four. That, like, why? It's not that hard. Everyone is saying the same thing. And we've been saying this since the first game of the season. We need a four. And I don't know if it's a, if it's a, it's like a ego thing. If you can't bite the bullet and just be like, all right, I was wrong about Wancho. Jake Lehman, he's probably more of a three even. He's not even a four. He's not even a Jake four. Lehman. Jake Lehman looks good at the three. Is Cause the, he's a three. Like, Cause he's a three. Yes. <laughs> So, like, why can't you just get a four? It's not that hard. There are so many, not even, I'm not even saying. We have a, like, we're not even going to, we've brought up Rodney Hollis Jefferson not so even much. Him. And it's, and not even him. There's other fours out there that are, like, Frank Kaminsky is now a free agent too. Sign him. Like, it's, Just sign somebody. Like, just you give someone a shot. Like, you don't, like, I'm sure we even have a guy in the on the Wolves G League team that is a four at heart. And, like, we don't need to keep doing these small ball lineups. We don't, like, just get a yes. damn four. I agree. And I think the four that, so me and Peyton were talking about this before we got on here, Jared Vanderbilt in the few minutes that he's played has a higher player efficiency rating than LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo. You, I don't understand. Every time he comes on the floor, he does something positive on the offensive and defensive end. And it's the same with Jaden McDaniels. Those are two true fours just stashed on our bench that we at least let it, everyone's saying start Vanderbilt and stuff. I don't think you have to start Vanderbilt. Oh. You just have to give him good minutes. Like he's not going to thrive if you play him three minutes in the garbage time. Give him 15 minutes of actual game time and let him see how he does. And if he proves himself yet again, plug him in. Cause we, there's no one at the four right now that's benefiting us. Yeah. So we could say, we could say, okay, so maybe he's only has such a high PER because he's playing garbage time or because he's not getting, is as many minutes so it's like kind of like it's kind but of he's the thing is he's it. doing if you if you're giving someone five minutes a game expect them to and if you get only five minutes a game this is just a life lesson in general for basketball players if you get only five minutes a game make the most of your five minutes yeah, and that's and exactly that. what he's done every time yes and that's why the fans i think have kind of been falling in love with him as a player because he you can tell he actually cares like some other some of the other guys like we're down by 30 and they're just kind of like just like all right let's get out here let's get to the next game but that guy he's fighting he's he's given us some fight and that's when you're in a losing situation as a team and as a fan base that's all you can ask for and he's giving it his all he's diving on the floor he's playing full court defense he's doing everything like the worst that can happen if you play in more minutes is he doesn't play that well. And then, you well, know, honestly, the worst that could happen is it just stays the same. Cause there's, we're at rock bottom right now for yeah. the four position. 
Yes. And I feel like if you give him more minutes, he's not going to blow the game for you. All he can, it's all, it's a win-win. All he, like, all he can do is, all he can do is play good. And if yeah, he plays bad, the then you're like, yeah, we're right. Exactly. The, mo- the moment I fell in love with him was when it was, it was in the Lakers game. We were getting blown out yet again. And he just picks up, he, every single time LeBron touched the ball to bring it up, he picked him up full court. Yeah. Like, who, shows, who's going to do that? Like, yeah, this just awesome. shows you, you want it. Yeah, and like if you're if you have a chance to guard LeBron James, why wouldn't you pick him up full court? Why wouldn't you be like, oh yeah, I guarded LeBron James and I picked him up full court every time and I got him pissed off? Like, that's awesome. That's what we want. And yeah, so like we already have these fours. Why not give him a shot? That's what I'm I'm saying. And I think Jane McDaniel's is one of those players that needs to be on the court to develop. If he's just if he's just in the 13th roster spot the whole game, you give him a minute. Like I was so mad last game last night when we played him only one minute against the nuggets and he comes out, it was, it was 50 seconds and he scores as many points. He scored five points. Like what? Like, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's what you call taking advantage of your playing time, but kind of off topic. I mean, yeah, I think Jared Vanderbilt should get more minutes. I don't see a reason why Ryan Saunders wouldn't give him at least at least 10 to 15 minutes a game. Like just give him a little bit more minutes to see what he can do in actual against the starting lineup. Yeah. And I'm, and by saying we have weapons on the bench and stuff, I'm not saying don't get a a new four. We need a new four. Yeah, we do. But if we're going to be stubborn about it and be like, no, the guys we got are the guys we got. We signed Wancho to a huge deal. Like we don't want to bite the bullet on that. We got rid of Ronda Hollis Jefferson. We don't want to be the bigger guy and sign him back. Like, if you're going to do that, fine, but at least play other fours. Don't be playing Jared Culver at the four because he's not a four, and that's going to make everyone look bad. And touching on that, I think D'Angelo Russell, man, I think he needs to be the one. I don't think he plays well at the two. I honestly and I was I don't. just about to go into that. I think because I was talking about lineup changes, like you cannot have – I it just doesn't work. They both play terrible together. Whenever Ricky Rubio and D'Angelo Russell are on the court together, that is when – shit hits the fan like every single time like we are terrible when those two are on the court together and it's because neither one of them can make a play without the ball it's just it's just not how they it's just not their players player style and that's okay but ryan has to be smart enough and i think he finally learned last game that they cannot be on the floor together and like we knew this coming in though because they're both yeah, they both need the ball. Ricky, he's not a scorer, but he needs the ball in his hand to facilitate for others and get the offense going. He can't play off ball. No. D'Angelo Russell, he needs the ball in his hands to come off screens and create shots for himself and others. But there's not two balls at the same time. We saw this problem in uh, Houston with Chris Paul and James Harden. I mean, it's not this. It's it's basically the same thing, just on a lower level, because you had Harden who need, Harden and D'Angelo Russell pretty similar. They need, to, they need the ball in their hand to score. CP3 and Rubio, pretty similar. Like, they need the ball in their hand to facilitate to others. And I'm not yeah. saying that Ricky Rubio is as good as Chris Paul, but I'm saying it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Ricky, Chris Paul is just a – Chris Paul is an amazing Ricky Rubio is what he is. And James yes. Harden is is the best volume scorer there is in the NBA. You're yep. not going to find someone who's a better scorer than James Harden. Exactly. Besides so, maybe Kevin Durant. Yeah, so we saw that happen in in, uh, in Houston, and it just it's not working for us here, and we just got to realize that we got to be okay with that, and it's okay having Ricky come off the bench. We don't need him. Yeah, so. and I I think my optimal lineup at the moment, I think this lineup would do the most damage, and I think it would it would just work the best. I think at as of right now, I think D'Lo at the one. Mm-hmm. Malik at the two, mm-hmm. Culver at the three. I I hate to say it, but if they're not going to give Vanderbilt any minutes, then Wancho's going to have to play the four and then Nas at the five. I don't know why that hasn't been a starting lineup yet. I don't know why. I don't know. I just don't know why he hasn't done that yet. And then on the bench, I think Anthony Edwards and Ricky Rubio work really well together. Yeah. I think they need to take advantage of that more because every single time, Anthony Edwards and Ricky Rubio are on the floor. Ant-Man gets good shots. He also gets to drive a lot because they, they give him the, the, the key to the offense on the bench. I, th- sure. I, I don't know why the slide-up hasn't been used, but I think that's what we have to roll with next game. Yeah, and especially when they're saying, like, start Anthony Edwards. 
I don't think we need to start Anthony Edwards. I think he needs to get more minutes, but I'm completely fine with Edwards coming off the bench with that second team. And yeah, when he's, when he's on the floor with that second team, it's his offense. I think that'll be more beneficial to him than having him play next to Malik and D'Angelo Russell the whole game. I think yeah, because so. I think I think.